Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. Today, a decades of environmental disaster in Nigeria's Niger Delta. We look at why spills continue in the most polluted place in the world. So this is a show about a particular community in the southern part of Nigeria and our community online has really reacted to it. Malika, what do you have? Well, people from that community itself are actually tweeting us pictures of what life is like, what mm. it's like to live there. This is one picture in particular that really is quite striking. This is from Sata, uh, from Bomu, a community in Agoni land. He says this is a signpost right outside his house. He writes, our farmlands are unfarmable, our rivers unfishable. It is safe to say the Agoni people died a long time ago go and you see the picture there says water not fit for use and we want to hear your stories as well and your perspective you can tweet them with hashtag AJStream. Decades of oil spills from aging pipelines continue to contaminate the water soil and air in Nigeria's Niger Delta. Many around the world learned about this environmental disaster in the 1990s through the work of Agoni human rights activist Ken Sarawiwa. He highlighted the fight of Nigeria's Agoni people against oil corporations and his rallying helped force Shell out of Agoni land in 1993. Two years later, Sarawiwa and eight other activists were executed by Nigeria's military government on trumped-up murder charges. They were later known as the Agoni Nine. Twenty years after their deaths, why is the Niger Delta still so polluted? With us to talk about this via Skype in London, Ken Sarawiwa Jr., a journalist and son of human rights activist Ken Sarawiwa. On the phone in Yenagoa, Nigeria, Inimo Sanamama. He works on Niger Delta community empowerment programs with the Stakeholder Democracy Network. In Port Harcourt, Nigeria, Fine Face Damnamine Fine Face. He works with the Nigerian NGO Social Action. And also in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, Erax Koba an environmental activist in the Niger Delta. So, gentlemen, it's really good to have you here. I'm going to take you back to a moment in the early 1990s. This is Ken Sarawiwa in a rally. Have a listen to this. We are going to demand our rights peacefully, non-violently, and we shall win. The cheering, the crowd there is positive. I feel hope in that little clip there. So, Ken... Uh, all these years later, when you see that, what comes to mind? Did, would your dad be appalled by what's happening right now? Well, I think it's bittersweet because when he was um, when he was executed, along with the others, the the the, 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 the attempt was to silence his voice and and and, and silence the Ogoni voice. Um, and even though we haven't uh, got the justice that he would have liked, and we all want, um, here we are, 20 years later, still. Um, you know, you're, we're on the show, he hasn't been forgotten, mm -hmm. and, and there are many, many protests planned and actions planned around the world, uh, and many people have been inspired by, by Ken Sarawiwa and the Ogoni. So clearly, uh, whatever, the, 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 whatever the authorities wanted to achieve hasn't been achieved at all, um, but is, it is bittersweet because, you know, we, we lost our hero, we lost my, I lost my father. Sure. Um, but nevertheless, you know, we're still here talking about the issues and it won't go away until we have justice and people will continue to agitate for justice. Erex, if you took me on a tour of some of the worst polluted places, where would you take me? What would we see? I would take you to three places. First of all, in Kedere, I am going to take you to what we call the Bomu Manifold and then the adjoining land called Barabe Dome. Uh -huh. I'm also going to take you to Bo Banabe, where we had a blowout in the late in the early 70s, and up to today is still that contaminated. And of course, I will take you to the creeks, where the creeks are so much being devastated, and then the livelihood of the people is just taken away. I want to continue that tour, actually, with uh, a few things from our community member. And Emma, I'm going to go to you with this. This is a tweet we got from one person who says, farms and rivers here are polluted, impacting on livelihoods. There's no drinking water for affected communities. I also want to play you a video comment uh, that another member of our community has shared. Uh, this is a perspective from a Korede. Have a listen. Habitants of this part of Nigeria, particularly the people of Ogoni land, have suffered enough avocs of oil spillage and pollution 
Not only them, the phenomenon possess, poses a hazardous threat to farmland and wildlife of this region. As such, life has been completely miserable over there. In fact, these people have been made to regret being residents of Nigerian oil producing region uh, because they have none or little benefits to show for it. So Enemo, he says people have been made to regret even being residents of the region. Can you relate to that? Yes, I definitely do relate to that. I think what is happening in the Niger Delta is scandalous. Um, and it is, there's also an element to what is happening that is almost criminal. Um, the people in the Niger Delta, their environment, their health, uh, they've almost been sacrificed for this oil and gas production to continue. Um, the Nigerian government and its agents, in collaboration and in partnership with the oil companies, do tend to ignore the devastation that is ongoing in the Niger Delta. The level of environmental degradation is such, and by the way, it is uh, widely acknowledged by all observers that the Niger Delta region is one of the most polluted uh, areas in the world. And uh, not only is it being ignored uh, okay. by the federal authorities and uh, the oil companies, but even the international community, knowing what's going on there, seems to turn a blind eye. So the question is, why are people not raising the flag on the unfolding disaster, environmental disaster in the Niger Delta region? Uh, you know, that, that, that's that's a good question, there are Gen people gentlemen. There. People's lives have been affected. Fine face. I would like to add to that by saying that uh, when you talk about the Niger Delta and what is happening in the Niger Delta, as far as the oil companies are concerned, there is nobody living in the Niger Delta. The Niger Delta is an oil field where they go and extract oil, exploit the oil, take away, take the money away without wanting to know whether or not people live here. As far as they are concerned, there is no human being living in the Niger Delta. All they know is that the Niger Delta is an oil well, and every human being walking on the streets of the Niger Delta is a potential oil well that they will come and exploit someday. That is what the Niger Delta uh, is taken is taken for by the oil companies. They don't believe people live there. Otherwise, they won't do what they are doing. So, Ken, you've you've worked with a number of Nigerian governments um, from your know, Adwa, President Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. You've been right in there in the seat of power. Um, how come after administration after administration after administration, nothing's been done? Well, I think it's like, it's a little bit over the top to say that uh, nothing's been done. Um, you know, after years of protests, um, one of the things that uh, President Obasanjo uh, decided to do was to try to bring together all the stakeholders, the oil companies, the community, and the federal government to see if um, um, we could establish uh, a modality to resolve some of these, some of these issues. Um, and the United Nations Environmental Program um, was commissioned to, to do an independent report paid for by Shell. Uh, to study, to bring, to, to give some science to what was actually happening. Because, you know, when my father started raising these issues, um, he called it genocide. And, and, and uh, Shell took exception to this, uh -huh. uh, and the federal government, of course, silenced him. Um, but after the environmental assessment of Ogoniland report by UNEP, yeah. it totally vindicated what my father was saying. Yeah, and they also um, the said, scientists... and we were just looking at this report right now as you were talking, it came out in 2011, and they said this was Sorry. urgent. The UN said this is really urgent, you have to do something right now. So when yeah. I said nothing's happened, tell me what exactly has happened. Well, I think the, if you look through the report, um, and it's a comprehensive report, it yeah. does actually warn that it will take some time because of the overlapping uh, uh, functions uh, and the slowness yeah, of government, but, the, but, look, but look here, look here, look here, I, okay. I think, here's, 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 I a, here's a report, report back from I, Amnesty from this I year, think, and a gentleman here says, Amadi, he's I a think, farmer from the Niger Delta, our crops are no longer productive, no fish in the water. How much time do Agoni land people have? Look, I, I tell me, I totally agree with this. I, you know, think, I was I, in government trying to push government to move a lot quicker on this. You know, yeah. the, 
the, the challenge is, the problem is, 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 is structural, it's administrative. Structural, it's, I think and meanwhile, the rivers so, are disgusting. I, Erax, I, what did you want to say? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The government yeah, I, 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 I think that government deciding to, you know, ask uh, UNEP to get into Ogoni to do the research was born out of some feelings that perhaps if we do this, it will be palliative. They never knew that the kind of result that came out of that research was going to be so. And so it took them by surprise that this is the kind of devastation that is existing in the place. Otherwise, they would not have at so, all attempted. So, to Erex, how, how can it take you by surprise? May I come in there? May I, may yeah, I come go, in there? Go ahead. I, 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 I'm I shocked at the surprise. I, I think that yeah. um, uh, the UNEP report on Ogoniland was spot on. However, let me say this. Actual oil and gas operations stopped in Ogoniland. Uh, it has stopped for quite a while. And the Ogoni people agitated, and they managed to get the oil companies to stop the operations in Ogoni land. Yeah. However, oil productions have been going on in several other parts of the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will say this, uh, there are some communities in across the Niger Delta that are even more devastated than Ogoni land. Sure. So if the federal government thinks that by, it, we welcome the intervention on Ogoni land. However, the situation is so bad in some communities such as you know um uh say in south and in yeah. that uh, there is absolutely no way the federal government can uh, ignore the high level of devastation in so many other communities and think that by dealing with the recommendations of the UNEP report which yeah. we welcome on Ogoni land, I think I want to I want maybe, to disagree uh, with uh, I want, you know uh, stop people from. I want to disagree with Nemo on that point. It's a problem, and they have to deal with it uh, from uh, a Nemo, regional Nemo, let me just bring in yeah. something the that might help all the, all the yeah, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, just, gentlemen, just give, give me sorry, a, give me a pause sorry. for a second. Just I, I'm just going to do a little bit of geography here. I want to show you um, a map of Nigeria, and I want to show you the Niger Delta and where Ogoni land is. Go ahead, let's roll that map, because then you can see here we've got Nigeria. The green is the Niger Delta. Agoni land is that tiny little bit there. But as Anemo was saying, the, the, the devastation, the pollution is in other places in the Niger Delta. Uh, fine face, what did you want to say? Yeah, what I want to say is that I want to disagree with Nemo that there are other parts of the Niger Delta that is more polluted than Ogoni land. There is no such place in the Niger Delta that is more polluted than Ogoni land. It is only in Ogoni land that you have communities where people don't live anymore. We have a community called Goi community in the Niger Delta. Nobody lives there. I mean, in Ogoni, nobody lives there anymore. We Why? have a community called Fine Goenle face. Fine face. In, what, 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 does the yeah, land, yeah. what does the land look like there? Why did they run away? Because of oil pollution. Oil activities have sacked people from these communities. And I want to list these communities for you I, so that Nimo will know that there is no other part of the Niger Delta that is more polluted I than think, Ogoni land. I, it is only in Ogoni that you have several I, communities. I want to list these I, communities for you. Let me, let me list these communities for you. We have Goi community. No one lives there anymore. We have Buenle community. Think, nobody lives there anymore. We have Busu community. Nobody lives there anymore. We have some other communities in the Niger Delta where people live no more as a result of oil exploration activities. And you are saying that uh, it is... There are other parts of the Niger Delta that is more polluted than Ogoni. I don't think there is any. All right, what so gentlemen, this is, this is, this, um, this is a tragic competition just, uh, between different areas. Uh, let me just you. bring in, uh, let me bring in the community. Gentlemen, Enimo, Enimo, let me bring in some other voices. Gentlemen, this is a problem of gentlemen, the Niger Delta. Enimo, hold tight for a it moment a because I want to share the conversation. It's important. The community are really wanting to get in. Malika, go ahead. Well, this is a point that someone raised that I think is kind of interesting. This is the BB uh, who says no one yet is talking about the selfishness, the BB writes, of the residents of the communities. They damage pipelines for compensation. Another person adds on to that. This is Raymond. He says most of the pipelines in the Niger Delta go through the creeks and oil thieves vandalize them to get the crude. Uh, so, uh, Irax, I want to go to you with that. How big of a problem is vandalism? I think I disagree oh, with those I, uh, comments. I, I disagree I, with those. Please just give me some time. Let me make a point Go ahead, fine face. Go ahead. I, I disagree with anybody saying that those pipes are being broken by the people because they want compensation. These are pipes that were laid in the 1950s, and this is 2015. Nothing had been done. The pipes have not been, uh, have not been repaired. They have not been replaced. They have not been maintained. 
And we know Share as a company that do not practice the best international standard as expected by the law, not even the laws of Nigeria. Share does not respect those laws. And if you say that these pipes are being broken because the people want compensation, how much can they pay them as compensation? Mm. These are people that the pipes are bursting and deflating like balloons, polluting their environment and rendering their entire lifestyle, their, their, their land, useless. And you say they are bursting it because they want compensation. Um, what has yeah. Share paid uh, as compensation please, to the people in Nigeria? Just to buttress that point, no, no. how been, much can um, that be sufficient? Fine face. I, just so we can hear everybody, I really want to hear this debate very clearly. So, fine face, take a pause for a moment. Arax, you go next, and then Anemo, you go after Arax. Arax, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. If I may buttress okay. um, the point I uh, he just exactly. made. All right, okay. so in, in Nemo, I, I want to hear Arax first. In Nemo, let me hear Arax first. Gentlemen, I have to do one at a time because you're all so passionate. I want to be able to hear exactly what you're saying. Arax, you go first. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I first of all I disagree with Inemo that um, Ogoni people is less Ogoni environment is less polluted, because when we talk about it, it depends on his own perception, and that takes me to what Ken has said earlier on that it depends on who you are talking with. Everybody describes pollution in his environment based on what he knew and see. I do not think that Inemo appreciates to all extent the, the level of devastation in Ogoni. Otherwise, he wouldn't say so. And then that takes me on to the issue of pipeline vandalism. I seems to challenge whoever is talking about that because we have high level of security. When I say high level of security, armed military men that are stationed at most of these locations where we have oil facilities stationed. Uh -huh. For example, I was talking about the Bomo Manipul. Up to this moment, there are military presence heavily armed that are stationed there. And then when oil uh, spill occurred in such an environment, you begin to say, sabotage, who's sabotage? Is it the armed soldiers that are there guiding the pipes that are sabotaging the pipelines? Or is it uh, the old woman that is in the house that do not even know how to operate each of these facilities that are there? Okay, that Arax, to I'm going to move on. I'm going to push on a little bit because there's so much to talk about and there's only a little bit of time. So, Enimo, just very briefly, what did you want to add? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, the problem of uh, pipeline vandalization uh, for compensation is overblown. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. However, there are lots of pipeline integrity problems as a result of just old dilapidated pipelines that have not been you know, replaced by the oil companies. Furthermore, let's not forget that uh, some of these oil companies have not been actually investing in the sector because of incertitude, about the petroleum industry bill or other uh, legislative uh, or, 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 you know, policy issues. For, and let me also say that, you know, in the Niger Delta, we have very, very unfortunate uh, practices, such as some of these oil cleanup companies mm. who work with the oil companies. They can actually go ahead and tamper with some of these pipelines to ensure that they remain in business. Wow. So there are all sorts I, of complex issues. All right, that so, so it's a, sabotage going on there as well. Like do you, I will uh, mention names. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Companies all right, like so Ajib, they should uh, simply revoke their permits to operate in Nigeria because they do not wow. respect the environment. Uh, their abysmal attitude towards environmental issues and, you know, simply repairing, replacing so I don't, the pipeline. I don't have their voices here in, in Nemo be, to, to actually give any pushback. So I'm just going to say this it's is according to your uh, opinion. Let me just jump into Femi, the community Femi. and see. I think, Femi. I think Femi. also. Yes. I think also. Yeah, I yeah, think Ken. Also, Femi. Femi, can I come in? I mean, yeah, I think, Ken. you know, we've all, we're all very passionate about these issues. We come from the Niger Delta. Um, we have all, in our different ways, suffered from oil, oil, uh, pollution and, and the effects of the oil industry, but an independent study was carried out, commissioned by the federal government, paid for by Shell. This independent study is a, the most comprehensive um, report on what is happening in my community. In some of the, let, me, let me just give you some of the facts that, that's freely available. Um, yeah, we, we were showing it, Ken. I, I don't want to dig deep, 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 deep into that report because people can actually look at that and I can tweet that out. What's the point you yeah, want to make? Because the community want to talk to you as well. And we've got five minutes left. Malika, okay. go ahead. 
Well, this is a point that I want to push just a little bit because it's looking ahead. This is Agoni Dream who tweets in that the norm is to accuse the natives, he writes, of sabotage and with the government ever playing the supportive partners. Over the years, the government, rather than protect the people, protected the multinational oil companies like Shell. And so that's a, a theme that we've heard here over the course of this conversation. But fine face in pushing this forward then, do you actually have faith in President Buhari that something will be done to address this? Well, I want to commend uh, President Buhari for the steps he has taken so far towards the implementation of UNEP report on Ogoni. And I want to say that the steps he took was as a result of the foundation already built by former President Gulok Jonathan. But it is surprising that since August 5, that President Muhammadu Buhari talked about the fast tracking of UNEP report, implementation of UNEP report in Ogoni. Nothing has happened. This is the fourth day of November 2015. Nothing is happening in Ogoni. The Ogonis are dying in their numbers. And I, I don't know why the president has not declared a state of emergency in Ogoni to fall all routes of, uh, you know, administrative bottlenecks so that the UNEP report in Ogoni can be implemented. If you go to Ogoni today, every week you see festivals of barriers in Ogoni land. People are dying in their number. And these things were mentioned in the report that was commissioned by the federal government I, and paid for by Shell since 2011. I want this report implemented so that the Ogonians will think, stop dying in right. their numbers. And that's fine, face. That's exactly what I, Ken was saying. I like the, the, the direction to go for Nigeria is, and for the oil corporations, is right there in that United Nations uh, report. Exactly. Let me show you something yes. here because I, we I, talked to Shell quite uh, extensively over the last week. They Good. decided not to come on the program. But let me show you this. Shell Nigeria is committed to cleaning up all spills from its facilities, irrespective of cause. This is equally the case in Agoni land. It's crucial to put an end to the widespread theft and illegal refining of crude oil, which continue to cause new spills and impact on the environment. That sounds a little bit like... Uh, Passing the buck, passing the naira, yeah. there, Ken. Yeah. Um, if yeah, you, I, I'm yeah. going to give Ken the Ken the last word here because we really were looking at 20 years on from the execution of the Agoni Nine. Where are we? Yeah. Where are we right now, Ken? Well, I think the the issue is that look, before my father and others started uh, raising these issues in Agoni, I don't think many of our viewers, um, mm. many of the people watching this program, had ever heard of a place called Agoni. Mm. Um, few people knew the kind of the, the, this was a place where uh, oil companies and the federal government were making tremendous profits, but it was at the expense of the people and and the land. Now we know this, and now people are watching, and so the federal government, Nigeria and Shell, will continue to be held to account because we know what has happened. You can't continue to, op to operate under the cover of either of a military government or, or ignorance. The information is there, and the world is watching. And, and I think, for me, that's, that's the most gratifying thing of a, of, of, of a tragic and, uh, and a terrible story. Sure. Arax? I think, um, yeah. I, I think if I, I may I, come I, in I, here. Arax. Yeah, I think, I, yeah. I think that that brings me back to what I said earlier on, that government never knew that the report, the UNEP report, was going to bring or bring such level of revelation as contained therein, and that was why they commissioned that exercise. Otherwise, perhaps they wouldn't have done that. Five months or so after the pronouncement by uh, President Buhari, nothing is done yet in the mm. Ogoni uh, uh, cleanup activities, and that suggests strongly that perhaps the the will power is not there, and that's why... Well, it also to could suggest that he hasn't appointed ministers shell. yet, Iraq, so it could also suggest that okay. the first few months of his administration... So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, Arax, OK? I, okay. I, I know yeah. as Nigerians yeah. that sometimes yeah, we're a little critical. Let, yeah. But hold tight a minute, everybody, yeah. because I'm taking you all to the post-show. Let's talk about Ken, share. Anemo, Fineface, Arax. Gentlemen, I love hearing you this debate. I'm taking it. I'm taking it online. Allow me to do that, stream.aljazeera.com. But first, Malika. I'll end with this picture. This is tweeted to us from Agoniland. This is Sata, who started the show and ends with this picture. He says, this brings him hope. There's something resilient and hopeful about a little sprig of green in the midst of that devastation. Do you have hope about the Niger Delta and the most oil polluted place in the world? Join us online for more of this discussion. Thanks for watching. Take care.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about oil spills in Nigeria's Niger Delta. Getting back to that conversation via Malika. Malika. I want to play a video comment from Sata, who you saw a picture from a little bit earlier. And he talks about Nigeria's dependency on oil and what he thinks this means for the future. So I want you all to have a listen to this. I feel what is preventing the cleanup of the Niger Delta and Ogoni is what I call selective ownership. We have a government that is quick to come to the rescue when there is a disruption in oil activities. But when there's an oil spill, they're actually like a gasical in their approach. And another thing, once you're a minority in Nigeria, you actually have a problem with uh, making the government come to your rescue at uh, any given point in time. And in the scale of preference of the Nigerian state, the Niger Delta and the Ogoni people are actually at the bottom of it. So Eric, it's, it's strong words. He, he recorded that video outside because he wanted to give us a flavor of what it's like in his neighborhood. And you saw the pictures earlier, but he ends that comment by saying the Ogoni people are at the bottom of this, uh, this rung, this scale, and that's due to the dependency on oil. What do you make of that comment? That's absolutely true, because if you look at it from the 50s, oil had been drilled in Ogoni land, and Nigerian government have made so much money from it. You can, if you travel to Ogoni land now, nobody will tell you that the, level, the amount of money that have been so gotten or accrued to the federal government from Ogoni land has come from this kind of environment. You really will believe it. And I'm also not happy to see comment from Shell saying, oh, we are ready to clean up. Who, why will you be ready or why will you be willing? We want you to clean up. You continue to post on your website information that are absolutely not true, misinforming the world about the level of pollution and then your activities in that place. And then you would ask people to say, oh, because the Ogoni people are destroying their environment. So we are saying that we are at the bottom of it because government continue to come there to harvest and do not want to plant. And then they destroy their environment and we are left with nothing, absolutely nothing. And then they continue to now blackmail the Ogoni people and say, oh, you are destroying your environment. So in all fronts, the Ogoni people are at the bottom of it. Mm. See, Ken, if you took... Uh, if, if you took, if I may come in there. Yeah, go, go ahead. I think uh, I have wanted to yeah, come in. I, but, I, think, uh, I think that, uh, I Emma, think that um, you know, we really, really welcome the, uh, uh, the, 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 the policy and the decision of the uh, Buhari government to implement the recommendations of the UNEP report. But what I will say is that um, that's going to be like a drop in the ocean. They have to look at this problem from a regional perspective. The problem is enormous. And the international community cannot continue to turn a blind eye to the disaster unfolding across the Niger Delta. So, Inema, can I just ask you, wh why do you say that? Because let me, let me play you something here. This, this is Ken Sarawiwa. Um, saying this, like, you're basically saying the same thing. Ha have a listen to this. I accuse the Nigerian government and the international, multinational companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of genocide. I appeal to the international community, to the British government, the American government, the Japanese government, the countries of the European community who buy oil from Nigeria to come now to the aid of the Ogoni people and stop this genocide. You know, you just said that. That's exactly what you just said. And Ken Sarawiwa said that over 20 years ago. Nothing's oh, yes, changed. I know. I mean, that yes. is why I'm insisting here that the, so all the Nigerian uh, authorities, all the governments, it doesn't matter who, they've not really paid the attention and they've not had the willpower to actually um, do the right thing. And the fact that they've not done that, and the fact that all the ambassadors and the diplomatic missions of all these countries you mentioned are in Nigeria, the fact that the environmental situation is getting worse, the fact that the people of uh, the 90 Delta are almost uh, endangered, the fact that gas flaring in Nigeria is affecting the global climate and is contributing to global climate change. These so, Inema, I'm just going to say they don't problem. care, and right? The they the don't, they, they don't the care. Can, not doing can you, you, you've worked um, with three governments. Inema, hold, hold time for a moment. You, you're, you're, the you're, saying, you're saying the obvious, but Ken, why is this not obvious for various administrations that have worked? What's the priority there? I mean, 
the, the problem here is that there's, there's no trust um, between the community, federal government and Shell. And unfortunately, the federal government and Shell, and admittedly, sometimes the community, sometimes make clumsy statements. Um, but you have to start somewhere. And it's a process. Unfortunately, it's a process and it, and it does take time. Now, look, when there was a, uh, a BP spilled uh, oil into the Gulf of Mexico, it didn't take more yeah. than two to three years for yeah, the exactly. company to be exactly. fined and, and the cleanup process to begin and compensation paid um, and to the affected communities. Um, in Nigeria, things take much longer than that because, unfortunately, the federal government is dependent on the revenues from the oil companies, and the oil companies are in a JV with the federal government. And so, actually, you know what? <laughs> the, the third uh, party in this, in this tripartite um, um, stakeholder, the third stakeholder in this tripartite um, um, uh, picture is, 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 the, is, is the community who don't, who all we have is our land and all we have is our livelihood and all we have is our voice. And we can only continue to protest that this unholy alliance that is holding down the community, we can somehow break it. And, it, and as my father said in that, it, it, it requires an appeal to the international community to see what is happening, because it's not just Ogoni. We're talking about the Niger Delta, which is one of, the, one of the most fragile and important ecosystems in the world. We're talking about a place that has 30 million people, almost double the amount of people that, that Syria has. If we continue the way we are going, we're going to have a disaster and a catastrophe. My father called it genocide. But I think what's going to happen is that we're going to have um, um, environmental refugees spilling out across the entire region. And it will impact not just the region, it will impact the, the, the global climate. So this is not just an issue for the Ogoni or the Niger Delta. This is an issue for Nigeria, it's an issue for the, for, for the whole of Africa, and it's an issue that affects global climate too. And until I I... You know, the, UN, the UN has intervened on this issue, the science, the facts are there, and we have to move and we have to act. Now, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're still talking about this. I hope we're not talking about this in 20 years' time. I know. I was like, please, do not laugh. <laughs> I don't know, whatever the version yeah. of the laptop or Twitter <laughs> will be. Is like, I do not want I to want see to you in 20 years' time. Hold tight for a moment. Malika, go ahead. There's actually a point that you raised, Ken, that so beautifully echoed, really, by Jeff. And he says the figure of oil spills caused by Shell and e &I is alarming. And any other nation, such things would be a national emergency. But then there are lots of people here who want us to remember that this is because of a corporation. This is Mark. He says this is Shell's obligation under Nigerian law, uh, but they can't do it. So, uh, you know, Ken ended his comment by saying he doesn't want to see this still being an issue in 20 years. Fine face. You agree with that? Yeah, I want to say that, uh, you know, 20 years since the killing of Ken Sarawinwa, the Ogonis are still waiting for justice. Ogoni environment is still polluted. The Ogoni people have not gotten any benefit from oil. And this year that we wanted to celebrate Ken Sarawinwa's uh, 20th anniversary of his martyr, it is unfortunate to inform you at this point in time that the sculpture, that's the Ken Sarawinwa memorial bus that was donated to the Ogoni people by Platform London and other friends of the Ogoni people have been confiscated and impounded by the Nigerian government. And as I speak to you, that bus has been impounded at the Lagos Wharf, and we couldn't take it home. We have appealed to the Nigerian government through the Controller General of the Customs, Mr. Hamid Ali, to release the bus. But we have not gotten any response to you now. And it will interest you to know that the current uh, Controller General of the Customs Service of Nigeria was on the panel of those who killed Ken Sarawinwa 20 years ago. And now he's in charge and in position. Instead of him to allow, you know, the Ken Sarawinwa memorial bus to come home, he has confiscated right. the bus. So, and said so that fine the face, slow down a second, because nobody knows what you're talking about unless you know what fine face is talking about. So there was... Um, uh, a statue of Ken Sarawiwa, and it was in London, yes. and it was sent yes. back to Nigeria. Uh, yes. Ken, to tell us about this statue, just so everybody knows what, what uh, Fine Face was talking about. Tell us about this statue of your dad. No, on, uh, well, it's not a statue just of my father. It's a yeah. memorial to the Ogoni Nine. Right. And uh, ten, uh, 10 years ago, on the 10th anniversary, um, a competition um, was launched by Platform, an NGO based in London, uh, to try and design a living memorial um, to the Ogoni Nine um, that would move around and, and, and uh, inform and educate uh, people about what was happening in, 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 the, uh, in the Niger Delta. Mm. And the statue has, the, the, the bus 
Uh, so let's not call it a statue because it's a mobile. Right. Uh, it's a mobile monument, right. uh, as it were, has been moving around uh, the UK. And it was decided for the 20th anniversary to send it to, to, to Nigeria. Uh, unfortunately, when it arrived at, uh, uh, in Lagos, it was impounded by customs. Right. Um, now, unfortunately, the, the, the controller general of customs is Colonel Hamid Ali, retired. Right. who was one of the three men that served on the Civil Disturbances Tribunal that condemned, that tried and condemned my, and sentenced my father to death. Whoa. Now, yeah. for me, um, these are painful facts. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the day my father was killed, um, I was asked uh, by another news organization, we won't mention, <laughs> how I feel um, about Shell and the, and the federal government. And I said, look, you know, um, those who those who are responsible, um, those who are part of the problem, must be part of the solution. Mm. Um, I held out a, uh, an olive branch and I said, "Look, I'm prepared to work for peace. Um, I'm prepared to, to to forget my pain, my personal pain, to work for peace, to work for some of the things that my father lived and died for, because he was a proud Ogoni man. He was a proud Nigerian, and um, we extended the olive branch of peace." We always we prosecuted the struggle on a non-violent platform. Mm. We continue to insist that non-violence is the way forward. And we have held out the, ar the arms of peace to everybody. But those who were responsible for the injustice to my father and the other Ogoni eight continue, continue to reject that. And, you know, you can't continue down this line because there's only so much that the people will take. But regardless of all of that, it's 20 years since my father and others were unjustly hanged. But we continue to insist that let us do the right thing in the interest, not just of Ogoni, but the whole of Nigeria and the rest of the world. Ken and Animo and Fine Face and Arax, I really appreciate your insights, your debate, your discussion on today's program. So important an issue. Nigeria and for the world. Malika. I will leave us with this tweet with the handle Ken Sarariwa li lives on on Twitter. Pay no mind to what is said or written in the news. Our land is still polluted and neglected. Gentlemen, thank you for being part of this special AJ stream. Take care, everybody. <laughs>